Well, during World War II, uh, toward the end, the people who funded the Nazis, they came back in to like settle the Nazi score and they created the IMF, World Bank, uh, United Nations. And the United Nations is who the Germans actually s surrender to, to end the war. So they create this new supranational organization that has more global clout than just the Rockefeller family or the Rhodes Roundtable could ever have on their own, right? So in that milieu of, you know, the people that were orchestrating World War II then have an output, which is the United Nations. Now we're going to put this story in context. The United Nations this past week, uh, Tedros, we all know Tedros from the, the COVID, right? A uh, few people know that what qualified Tedros to be in charge of World Health Organization was that in his own country, he helped to cover up a cholera outbreak. And that got the attention of Bill Gates. And he's like, bro, if you can cover up an outbreak like that, you should come work for us. And so now Tedros is telling us, hey, we're going to have to be on the watch for this monkeypox stuff. And we covered it when it came out. And it seemed to be like a very limited use case of how people could get it. So therefore, it's not on most people's radar. They don't pay it much mind because they're not going to. What was that word that uh, Viva Fry kept using? Uh, orgies. They don't go to orgies. So you're not at a bunch of risk from the monkeypox. And, you know, there was a conversation. It might be in this clip. There was a conversation on this topic this past week where somebody was asserting that monkeypox came from like people messing around with monkeys. And then someone else observed, isn't that the official reason for AIDS? Right. So this, it's interesting. And then when you do get into like who had a bio lab over in in the Congo and Leopoldville and the places where AIDS showed up, was it an MI6 CIA bio warfare operations type thing? Are there Defense Department documents from the 1970s calling for the creation of such things? That could, you know, that's some crazy conspiracy theory stuff, but we're going to have to take a look at it. We're listening to this monkey pox. I'm not saying be fearful. I'm just saying, like, know the agenda that they're trying to roll out. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're in danger from this, but when they're making a new global worldwide health agenda after the recent precedents, I think this is where we want to learn to to pay attention. All right, so we're going to go to monkeypox outbreak. And then, I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, everybody's apparently social security numbers got leaked in a major hack and it's just out there for free which would cause chaos really just in this country so it's almost like a foreign entity who might not want a bunch of american attention could do something like that created a lot of calamity over here and and chaos and confusion and then to bring us through the confusion we are going to have you know like we've been waiting for the superheroes to show up well they are here and they are our ai clones apparently this maria bartiromo interview with an ai clone and the clones creator i guess is so it's beyond uncanny valley like i don't even know why this dude showed up it was total cringe but it won't be cringe for another six months or a year like they're going to work this stuff out and you're seeing a rough prototype of what they can do now or whatever they're publicly available now is so we're going to take it with a grain of salt and just put it in the record and say this happened this week in Grand Theft World News history. And when they have the real thing come up cyborg later, you know, you'll be able to see like this is where it came from. All right. Without further ado, let's go to Monkey Box on the outbreak. Let's go to Tim Cast. A big story here with CNN Health. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization declares a M declares M pox. M box. They don't want to say monkeypox yes. outbreak. They specifically hey. said they're not going to call it that anymore because they don't want to encourage any kind of negative thinking about it. What? Yeah, it's called monkeypox. This is like over a year ago. Yeah, so uh, first, yeah, racism. They said it's racism. They're saying that it's it's in Africa. A lot of people it's are sharing this story. in Africa. Yeah, there's a lot of people are acting like this may turn into another COVID pandemic. I really oh. doubt it. But I do appreciate that everyone's paying attention enough to be like, hey, wait a minute. Don't. Why is this happening? And uh, we got. I, I got to remind, remind everyone. We'll keep it family friendly, sir. So we'll use innuendo and um, analogy to describe the the affliction and how it spreads. But you're familiar, right, Terry? But how? But how did it spread? Like how did it when it was in America? No, it was in no, Al in Africa. Well, so probably the same way. They call it. Was, they call it the monkey pox. So how did some now? What, no, 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 no. That's just what it's called. The way it spreads is when uh, two individuals yeah. who uh, same sex love each other very much yeah. uh, like to push their body parts together. Ooh, so okay. humping. Now, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, okay. But no, this is family friendly. But I heard though that this could be fake news. I heard that it started 
in Africa because somebody was humping a monkey. <laughs> Isn't that how AIDS it started? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know how either. it spread I in heard Africa. They were... But the thing is, it went from, it's endemic in parts of Africa, and then there was a big outbreak at a... <laughs> at a music festival in Spain, I think about two years ago. And then it started spreading through Europe and North America. And this is like, there have been fatalities from it in North America and like in America and the news will not report on it. And then all of these cities had to set up like emergency funds because basically it's a form of smallpox. And so you can take a small, smallpox vaccine and like mitigate the, the consequences. But like this has been going on for a while, Mm -hmm. but it's this weird combination of like, they don't want to talk about it because it's not the correct demographic. They don't want to be critical of anyone's lifestyle. Right. Yeah. But also it's rapidly spreading among the community. So if you don't talk about it, you're actually putting people at risk. Exactly. Talk about it. Tell people to wrap up and don't, you know, who and it can spread. I yeah. believe on like bed sheets and stuff. You'd be really careful. But, like if you live with someone who has it, but I need somebody to Google how it started. The origin of it. Okay. Did somebody, can you please Google did someone hump a monkey? Um, but also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the point of the story is there is concerns that there will be another outbreak that they will use to justify some kind of stay-at-home order yeah. or some light. What, what I've predicted is they're not going to do lockdowns or stay at home. They're going to say, in light of the recent health scare, we want to make sure universal mail-in ballots are available to everyone, so we'll mm-hmm. be sending them out. Mm. That's what I see as being more like. I don't know if this is going to get that big because it's 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 towards a certain demographic of people um, that get it. I think part of it is like they tried to have a couple other like I kept seeing these headlines like new variant of COVID emerges or whatever else like they couldn't get anything else started so they're now bringing back they have, the initials, they have mysteriously yeah. named like if you haven't been following the story and you don't know what the M in M pox is actually like you might you might not realize that it's like for a specific yeah. issue. Yeah. I mean, well. Well, I mean, I understand it's for a certain, like, demographic, but it can still spread easily, yeah. probably. Like AIDS. You know, yeah. yeah. It could. I mean, it's it's something to be concerned about. On the other hand, it's not new. It's not like breaking out the way that COVID spread across yeah. the U.S. Like, this has actually been around for a while. And the fact that it was, I mean, it was a big deal when it was detected in Europe and North America because it had never been registered there. Uh, but unfortunately, this is now just something that we have to combat. Or at least, but know, they do. Co- our community, you have to but see, away. I like to know everything. Like, we know, we wanted to, like, just how I know, just how we know how the other one started in that lab. They call this, they named this the monkey pox. I want to know. I'm pretty sure it was, it was because they isolated it in monkeys. That's it. Okay. I think the original story was they had a bunch of lab monkeys, and then they were Are doing, there any monkey-like it, symptoms? No, it's gain-of-function research on monkeys, and then they were like, hey, look, this, <laughs> this virus is, is, is in But I'm in asking, monkeys. is there any monkey-like symptoms? I, uh, what does that um, mean? Like, if, I, if you so, catch it, will you have any monkey-like... No, you get sores all over the part no, of your body you where won't. it made contact. Oh, oh. Don't start doing bananas. <laughs> uh, fact check, uh, uh, Brave Browser uh, AI says no, it's not a result from your suggestion. I think that's a legitimate question. <laughs> I'm supposed to write your we'll, 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 we'll move on. Okay, then. so BBC we'll, we'll, says. We'll, we'll, no, no, we're going to move on to talking about the purpose of this segment, which is what do you think the Democrats and the Uniparty, the intelligence agencies, are going to try to do to. Well, uh, yikes. I was just about to log off for the day. And uh, I saw that uh, 2.7 billion records have been uh, taken from the United States, including apparently Americans' personal information, their addresses, social security numbers, and much more. I guess there's going to be some ways to find out if you got your stuff stolen. I mean, this is this is crazy. This is social security numbers never were meant to use to identify people, and now all of this is happening out there. It's 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 absolutely nuts. Of course, there will be no um, repercussions for this. But let's let's get into the story. Actually, you know what? Like co- literally co- coincidentally, uh, I have I've been using Aura for a while and I've been kind of checking my phone to see if I've been getting any notifications. I haven't yet. But uh, now would probably be a good time. Check this out. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Aura. It's a great opportunity for me because it's a Security numbers ended up on the dark web. 70 revealed any massive data breach. It hasn't even been a few months since they admitted. 
certain things I use. I know one of the reasons I get so many spam texts and calls is because big companies don't keep our data safe. In fact, not that long ago, AT&T revealed that nearly all of their customers' call and text records had been revealed in a massive data breach. It hasn't even been a few months since they admitted that 70 million of their users' social security numbers ended up on the dark web. The stolen logs also contain every number AT&T customers called or texted and so much more. Well, what can you do to protect yourself for that? Well, I also use it because I recently got fooled into a phishing scam on my Twitter. I tweeted about it very publicly. I fell for a link and I got my password and I've never felt safer because I use Aura. Aura will alert me if they find my phone number or any other sensitive information on the internet or if it's been compromised. And I'll show you that I use it. I don't really care if you see this information. You can see I have an Aura account, got a Kubota UTV. It alerted me, hey, somebody ran your credit. Somebody tried to verify your identity when I was doing my taxes. They've also completed removals of my information on the internet, removal services, all sorts of stuff. I absolutely love this. I'm logged into Aura almost every single week. You can see all sorts of protection things that they put together. It's absolutely crucial in today's market. I get alerts every couple of weeks that they found my stuff out. I request it get removed. It feels really empowering to take control of my life in this way. So literally stop leaving yourself vulnerable to data breaches or your own foolish clicking on links like I did. Go to my sponsor, Aura.com slash The Quartering to get a 14-day free trial and see if any of your data has been exposed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fortuitous that I actually had that on my calendar this week because I actually use the service and now I'm happy I have it. Hackers may have stolen social security numbers of every single American. Here's how to protect yourself. Well, like I said, <laughs> get that out. But uh, now about four months after a notorious hacking group claimed to have stolen an extraordinary amount of sensitive personal information from a major data broker, a member of the group has now repeatedly, reportedly released most of it now for free on an online marketplace for stolen personal data. The breach, which includes social security numbers and other sensitive data, could power a raft of identity theft, fraud, and other, other crimes. This is from the LA Times. This is not some like, you know, weirdo reg. So Teresa Murray, Consumer Watchdog Director, U.S. Public Information Research, quote, if in fact it is pretty much the whole dossier, on, if this is fact, this is in fact, sorry, pretty much a whole dossier on all of us, it certainly has, is much more concerning. Uh, and if people weren't taking precautions in the past, which they should have been doing, why? Why should we have to do that? Why should Americans have to worry about our government getting hacked constantly? According to a class action lawsuit filed in District Court of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the hacking group called USDOD claimed in April to have stolen the records of 2.9 billion people from the National Public Database. I'm sure perfect in time, just in time to vote for Joe Biden. Uh, which offers personal information to employers, private investigators, staffing agencies, and others doing background checks. This group offered a forum for hackers to sell the data, which included records of the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom for $3.5 million, a cybersecurity expert said on X. Um, last week, the purported member of the U.S. DOD, identified only as Felice, told the hacking forum that they were offering the full NPD database According to screenshots taken by Bleeping Computer, the information consists of 2.7 billion records, which includes everybody's full name, address, date of birth, social security number, and phone number, along with alternate names and birth dates. This is a catastrophe. This is absolutely bananas. This is, I mean, what it, what, I mean, people should go to prison for this. Our data in America, I mean, didn't AT&T just get hacked like a few months ago? That was the largest data breach. Now, there's articles on CNET. Was your social security number stolen in the national public data breach? What to do? If you're one of the 2.9 billion people whose information was reportedly stolen in a massive hack, here are the steps you can take to protect yourself. Well, apparently, first of all, let me tell you just as... Somebody, I don't need to read an article to tell, to tell you this. You need to be monitoring your credit for any weird credit polls or anything like that. Obviously, coincidentally, Aura has in this video, but you don't have to use that. Maybe you, I use it. That's the one I use. Two, you need to probably change your passwords, and I would be changing. I would be enabling two-factor authentication on literally everything I possibly could. 
Make sure all of your backup emails, you know you have these emails where you click forgot password and it goes to some email you don't have ac access to anymore. Make sure you make sure all of your two-factor authentication is on. That's a big, big way to protect yourself. Um, obviously, there are secondary levels uh, that can get around two-factor authentication, but in my experience with data breaches like this, they simply want the lowest hanging fruit, uh, meaning like if they have to go through a two-factor authentication, brute force attack kind of thing, they're just going to move on to the next social security number that's out there. Um, you know, again, they said, uh, what do you do? First, if you think your social security number has been stolen, know that the Social Security Administration itself can't even help you. Uh, head to the Federal Trade Commission's identitytheft.gov and fill out a form to receive a personal recovery plan. This plan walks you through all you need to know about protecting yourself, probably giving you a whole new social security number and probably screwing up your credit forever. I don't know. I sure hope not. Um, you know, this is, I mean, this is insane. This is, um, hackers may have just leaked social security numbers of every single American. Three billion records stolen from prominent data broker. Uh, much of the information appears to have been leaked from, according to Bleeping Computer, a data dump. We said the data had been encrypted. I'm sorry, the data, which is unencrypted, believed to have been obtained from a broker called National Public Data. Well, I'll be suing them. I think everyone should be suing them. It should it be said that the business assembles profiles for individuals by scraping information from public sources and then sells the data to the likes of criminal background checks, looking up criminal records. Well, how do they get my social security number in the first place? Previous leaks had included cell phone numbers, email addresses, but those reportedly weren't included in the latest and most comprehensive dump. As such, you won't be able to check whether or not your information has been included in a particular leak by punching in your email address. The data includes multiple records for many people with one of each addresses they've ever known to live at. The dump compromises of two text files which is nearly 300 gigabytes. That's a lot of text. It's not really possible for any independent body to confirm the data it includes records for every person in the United States. But as Bleeping Computer points out, the breach is likely to include the information of anyone living in the country. The publication states that the several people confirm the information in the dump on them and their family members, including dead relatives, is accurate. But other cases, some social security numbers were associated with the wrong. I mean, oh, what, that, is that what we're hoping for? That is that what we're hoping for is is like, oh, boy, I, sh I sure hope they had a typo on my social security number. I mean, is, is that is this where we are? I mean, it's absolutely insane. I, I can't even I mean, what in the heck? Literally, what in the heck is going on here? I just, I don't even understand. I don't understand. Welcome back. The promise of generative AI is shaking up the technology world and the markets. Industry giants set to invest an estimated $1 trillion into artificial intelligence over the coming years. One company at the forefront of it all is Delphi with the launch of their groundbreaking AI clones. The company offering users the ability to create digital versions of themselves, from company CEOs to YouTubers and celebrities that can help manage the workload, from answering questions to sitting in on Zoom calls via a clone. Joining me now is the co-founder of Delphi, Dara Lajivardian, and making his first ever television appearance is Dara's AI clone. Dara, thank you for joining us. Dara's clone, thank you for joining us. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thank you for having me. And I want to start by asking your clone a couple of questions, none of which have been sent to you in advance or your company before now. To Dara's clones, let me ask you what you believe the purpose or the uses of having a clone really is for. The purpose of having a clone is to scale your unique way of thinking and interacting. It allows you to share your knowledge, experiences, and personality with others in a personalized way. This can be incredibly valuable for mentoring, teaching, or even just sharing your insights with a broader audience. What aspect of cloning interests you the most? Uh, well, what I really want to get to is what are the disadvantages, and is this going to hurt me in any way? I mean, if I set up a clone of myself, for example, to help me at work, how will you be protecting my company's proprietary material? 
Great question. We take security very seriously. Your company's proprietary material is protected through strict data privacy measures and encryption. Only authorized users can access your clone, and you have full control over what information it can share. This ensures your sensitive data remains secure while you benefit from the clone's capabilities. What specific tasks at work are you thinking of using your clone for? Well, I'll ask the questions, and my next question is, how am I going to prevent someone else from creating a clone of myself, and how am I going to ensure sure that someone creating a clone of myself is not going to abuse it. We manually verify every user who signs up to create a clone by requiring a photo of them holding their ID. This ensures only you can create your clone. Unauthorized use results in a permanent ban. What specific tasks at work are you thinking of using your clone for? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Let's say I have a clone of myself. How do I ensure that that clone is going to answer the questions that uh, that clone is being asked as the way that I would want those questions answered? In other words, how well will that clone know me? Your clone will know you well because it learns from the content you provide. You can upload blog, posts, videos, and other materials that reflect your knowledge and style. Plus, you can engage in interactive Q&A sessions to fine-tune its responses. What kind of content would you start with? Well, I'm still researching this. Let me bring in the real Dara so that I could talk with you, Dara, and your thoughts on using a clone. Why would this be important and why would I need this, Dara? Thank you, Maria. And my clone, great job on the responses. What Delphi does is not only provide access to one-on-one -on -one learning that previously was not accessible, it allows people like you to reach more people in your authentic way. You already try to scale yourself by you know, writing, you've written a couple of books, you're on a couple of TV shows, you're scaling yourself, you're hiring team members and training them in your way of thinking but it loses the one-on-one -on -one authenticity of you. And that's what we're really trying to maintain here with Delphi. Well, thank you for mentioning my books and one of my Go books, ahead. The Pause 10 Laws that. of Enduring Success. Uh, actually, creative feedback for people at Delphi. What you did was remove the personal interactivity. It was proven by your clone continuing to ask Maria a question that she wasn't going to answer right then and not picking up and reading the room. But I'm sure they're going to they're gonna improve it. One of the limitations to the credit of the AI clone is the human being who was programming it, who actually thinks like that and would like, you know, let's get back to the pitch type thing. It was all cringeworthy. I just wanted to connect the dots for you between the secret uh, social security story, breaches of data, and that the AI clone is going to need a thousand times much more data than your social security number, name, and birth date to be able to do that stuff. And that you're giving that data to the idiot on the left side of the screen who can't even program the AI clone for his paid advertisement on Fox News because that's what that was, right? So, like, that whole situation spells catastrophe for anyone with an above Forrest Gump IQ. We can all see that. So, did it grab you in any way particular, Scott? Um, well, I've been, you know, my wheels are turning now. I'm like, dude, I think I'm going to sign up and start, like, 50 more podcasts this week. And I was thinking, Rich, don't ever... Get a clone to take over this show. Like it just wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Like I know you'd rather just be sitting on the couch, you know, eating popcorn, but I'm just kidding. Dude, but it's like, yeah, man. Uh that is crazy. I mean, I just was like envisioning this world where it's like all of a sudden now, like all the podcasts, all the shows are just some clone, just like, you know, just going through the motions and trying to simulate some sort of news broadcast. I mean, you know that's coming. You know that's coming. Whether or not, like, influential people will choose to just substitute a clone in for themselves at some point. I mean, that's the way with all this stuff, just watching this technology evolve in such a short period of time. I mean, it was just like a couple of years ago, ChatGPT became publicly available, right? You know that they have way more advanced stuff than this that they've had for decades, but it's like... You know, what's being trickled out to the public, you know, I don't know. Part of me, I think it's kind of cool. I use some of it sometimes for stuff. And, uh, you know, just the nature of the progression of this technology and how rapidly it's developing. Like, it's going to be so easy for me to type in a few prompts and make an entire, like, movie here in, like, two or three years that's, like, feature, you know, using, like, the highest level uh like like cinema cinema cameras and everything i could make i could script my own thing write it film it edit it produce it all right here dude. it's kind of like pre garage band like you know you had to go into a you had to go into a whole music studio and you had to do an internship and do all this stuff and now i can literally have it free on my computer i wrote this whole i produced this whole album on garage band here at home
And it's like, you know, now and then in five years, I'll be able to make a full like Lord of the Rings feature film just sitting here typing prompts or who knows, just within my head, I, you know, that technology could be available. I'll just whatever I picture in my head, some AI will create it, you know, and it'll project it into your head. It's just like the way that this technology is going. It's like it's it's wild, man. Yeah. And it's just the adoption of technology and how people are using it. Um, the whole thing you were talking about there reminded me of a scene from a 1985 movie. So it's, that's before you're born, right? No, I was two years old. Oh, two years old. Right. Yeah. So you probably didn't see it. 1985. It was a movie called Real Genius. It was one of Val Kilmer's early movies. It's about these super smart kids at a university whose intelligence is being used to create space-based laser weapons. Nothing to see there. Don't look at that. But mm. what I wanted to show you is there's something that uh, is on YouTube. I just pass it to LD. It's called the, the classroom scene. And essentially, the classroom scene is like the lecturer guys up there, the teachers up there, the, the students are there. And then as the weeks go on, students start bringing tape recorders. And then by the end of it, the teacher is replaced with a tape recorder. So there's no longer any human interaction going on because the teacher's like, if you guys aren't even going to show up, I'm just going to play a tape of myself too and go play golf, right? So LD, let's go to that clip. 1985, real genius. If you have never seen it, it'll pay off in a variety of ways. Uh, lazing dynamite might be one of them. It's essentially the same thing. Yeah. 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 Cause like they're going to have these like AI generated clone news broadcasters and we're all just going to have, have our... AI otter interpret it. And yeah. Give exactly. Us a nice summary. Exactly. exactly. It's like the same thing with like, you know, um, perplexity a dot AI that I've been using a little bit. It's like I'll upload an art. I have been doing this just a little bit. Just get like upload an article. Hey, summarize this article for me. And it's like, well, yeah, so if you can do some knowledge like, cramming to better yeah. select the things you actually want to spend interpersonal yeah, exactly. time with then cool. But if it's replacing the experience, like I wouldn't use an AI summary on a search browser as like the answer to a real question. No, if that's enough so. to let me know, I need to go find the source or there's maybe there's something yeah. that, you know, it's just like a 100%. guide. It's taking a replacement of wiki. And speaking of which, do you remember the guy from the AGR building? We had traced like the law firms and all that sort yeah, of yeah, good yeah. stuff. And there was a guy named Rice. Yep. Can, do you remember his name? Can you uh, look it up and clip Genie yep. while I we're talking you. about it? I got it? you, I got you, yeah, yeah. Because here's what I experienced this past week. I was trying to look these guys up. There was at least two times in the past week that I ran into the wiki page for the thing is disappeared. It hasn't changed. It no longer exists. There was two of these things in the past week. They were both with the Trump assassination attempt. And I was like, who has the power to wipe Wikipedia? Or maybe I'm wrong, right? So I'm trying to suss that out real time. Joseph, Joseph L. Rice the third. Okay. Joseph L. Rice the third, and can you find a wiki for uh, LD's got it? LD's already got it. You got it, dude. He's yeah. got it. I'm gonna open it over here. All right, so I was looking up. Okay, so it does have his wiki page still, and then it does have the law firms. Okay, so I was mistaken, and they didn't actually delete that page, but I do want to add it to the history blueprint, and I'm gonna open that up because it's not open since the restart. So anyway, I'll, I'll catch up with that. I was trying to add that into the Trump assassination attempt and the owners of the AGR building and whatnot. And uh, thank you for helping me find that. Another proof of use of Clip Genie is to find my mistakes and correct them. Uh -huh, so I can learn more expeditiously, apparently. Twice a year, I teach a course called Autonomy. It's a 12-week course. It teaches leadership, entrepreneur skills, executive skills. All these types of things that I saw were taken out of our education system in order to make the schooling or indoctrination system that we've all probably went through. And it has served us well enough to be interchangeable cogs in the machine of the globalists. But if we want a homestead, if we want uh, a write our own ticket, work from home job, work from anywhere type of situation... They're not exactly handing those out at the end of college. They give you a piece of paper and they're like, good luck. So reality is dropping us off here, but the demands of reality are up here. 
So I created autonomy to help people close that gap for themselves so they can level up their skills to the demands of the situations that life is putting in front of us presently. Life's demands of intellect and understanding precision and complexity are ever increasing. The schooling didn't prepare us for it. The media is not going to do anything but reinforce what schooling prepared us for. And so we're going to have to take a leadership position and take steps off the beaten path to kind of blaze our own trail in life. What makes the Grand Theft World podcast unique, invigorating, exciting, and informative? Most other podcasts out there are either doing straight up interviews or they're just covering the daily news. They're covering current events from the day they happen. And that is effective. It's useful. It's a great starting point. And then sometimes these current events change during the week past the first story. So we like to give it a little time. You have to wait till some of the dust settles on these stories in order to give them accurate coverage. And the other thing that's really missing in the media landscape is covering the articles that are coming out every day. That's great. That's necessary. But who's bringing in contextual history so that you can understand what has been going on for decades and decades to lead up to the machinations and actions that we see unfolding today. So what we do here on the podcast is we cover current events. Many of these things are censored, but we wait about a week. As a forensic historian, I focused mainly through my career on the history of globalism and collectivism and things that they call maybe the new world order. There's a lot of facts to these sort of circumstances, groups, events, activities, working groups that they've had over time. So for Grand Theft World listeners, we not only break down the current events, most of which that are censored during the week, we provide you with contextual history, we give you the source notes, the references, we do deep dives, and this really empowers you with an understanding of context and history so that you can make more informed decisions in your life. There's also a community, a membership where you guys can actually ask questions and we can get into the show and share evidence. And there's a town hall weekly for Grand Theft World for those who listen to it and are interested in covering the stories that we don't get to during a six hour show. Listening to it an hour a day, you could uh, easily consume the week's news, but you're gonna have substance and meaning and context and understanding. And with that, you can make higher quality decisions in your life. So if you're interested, in more quality in your life, go to grandtheftworld.com, click podcast at the top, and we'll see you there. Thank you. These allegations are false. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, folks. This isn't a video game. What are the most surprising things that you discovered once you started pulling on that thread, who he was connected to, what institutions he was influential over, what events he participated in? Come on, man. What are we talking about? Oh. You don't have to think about it, dude. I got this quote because uh, you said you didn't know much about Klaus Schwab. I made it my job to, as soon as this happened, I'm like, okay, this guy's their front man. Let me learn about the official history of the World Economic Forum. I got their 40 year history. I got every book that Klaus Schwab has written or ghost written. I went through those books. This is one of the most interesting passages. Come on, man. Come on.